Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Previously, we finished the third case of the second game, and what a finale it was! Like, yes, yes, it was very satisfying to uncover the true murderer and absolve our client of any wrongdoing, but it's what came right after. Just a stunning bit of voice work and motion capture acting and just this huge plot twist. Kazuma is officially back in the land of the living after uh, quite a few trials and tribulations of his own. So, the professor, that prolific murderer from ten years ago who killed British nobility and other uh, sorts of people, was a Japanese man, Kazuma's father, and... I don't know what to make of that. I can only assume there's some secret mission sent by the Japanese government to assassinate British nobility, and Kazuma's father was part of that, maybe? And maybe... Cosmo was sent here to continue that? I don't know. That's my theory. Anyway, let's go ahead and begin this penultimate case of this whole Chronicles collection. Oh, I'm not ready. I'm not ready, but let's go. Episode 4 Twisted Karma and His Last Bow. That could be Bo. Pipe in hand, Sholmes looked down at the thick, rolling fog outside our window. I wonder exactly how many mysteries are out there, hidden within this bed of fog, he said. Indeed, a most bizarre incident, born of a curious advertisement. A hellhound's mad gallop through the shadows of a serial murder. An executed man's graveyard resurrection in the dead of night. And a commonplace killing in a small, forgotten room at the edge of town. There is, naturally, always another side to every case of which most remain ignorant. And it is that other side which compels me to the scene of the crime, Wilson. So quickly now, take your hat and let's be on our way, my dear fellow. For our adventure is not over yet. Come, the game is afoot. Eight days after that earth-shattering trial and Cosma regaining his memory, we were in the foyer of one of London's most luxurious hotels, the, Gr the Great Waterloo Hotel. Wait a second. Wait a goddamn second. What, what, uh, doesn't Phoenix Wright have his offices right next door to the Gatewater Hotel? Oh, oh it's all coming full circle, isn't it? <laughs> Oh man, are we in for a whodunit mystery in this hotel? That, that's gonna be cool. Oh right, the science sim symposium. Emporium. Symposium. Yeah. Wait. Yeah? No. Right, it should be one of those things. Yeah. Professor Mikotoba is due to arrive at any moment. Yes, I'm so glad we got here in time. Susato-san hasn't been the same since what happened. Not that I'm surprised. The truth about Kazuma-sama's father. Do you suppose my father knew? That he was actually the mass murderer, the professor, you mean? I knew that's what she was thinking about. There's a good chance, I'd say. I mean... They did come here to London together 16 years ago, didn't they? Yes, that's true. Come to think of it, didn't you say 
That Professor Mikotoba knew about Kazuma going missing in Hong Kong as well? That's right, but for some reason he wasn't at liberty to talk to me about it. That probably means he knows then. About Kazuma showing up here in London with amnesia, and that he's regained his memory now. Ah, uh, there she is? Oh, yeah, it's Jagoku! Oh, wow, I... I didn't recognize... Professor Mikotoba. Wow. He looks so different. Oh, Father! Hello, Susato. How are you? I forgot what voice it gave him. I'm very well, thank you. We're delighted you've arrived safe and sound. Okay, but there's no... There's no doorway in that... Oh, wait, no. There could... Oh, yeah, that is a doorway over right there. It's an arcway. I was like, are they standing in the lobby? Shouldn't the entrance to this hotel be behind them? <laughs> Man. Hello, Mr. Naruhodo. Very kind of you to take the trouble to meet us here. Oh, no, not at all. It's my pleasure. We've heard all about your extraordinary exploits here in London, you know. The news has crossed the seas. It occurs to me that there is now a non-zero chance that Jigoku will be in the same room as, you know, the judge of the Old Bailey. I gave these two characters the exact same voice because I give all judges the same voice. Oh no. Oh, what are we gonna do? That's gonna be so confusing. Especially for like audio only listeners. I know some people do that. I do that a lot. Um, when I watch YouTube. Oh, what a. You know what? That is a problem for future me. <laughs> We've heard all about your extraordinary exploits here in London, you know. The news has crossed the seas. It. it has? I always look forward to reading the monthly reports that arrive with the steamships from Britain. Oh, I, I see. Well, thank you very much. Who is this man? And why do I feel as though I've seen him before? Hmm, I take it from your expression that you can't quite place me. In that case, how about a little reminder, Siyashiro? A firm tap should do it. Yes. A, a firm tap? What? Here we go, then. I hereby pronounce the defendant, Ryonosuke Naruhodo, guilty. <laughs> oh, you're... The court will now hear the trial of Ryonosuke Naruhodo. Your... Your Excellency! Hello, Judge Jigoku. How are you? It's been a long time. Ha 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 ha. Good, you've remembered now. That really did the trick. Guilty! Ha 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 ha. Only I was declared not guilty, wasn't I? And there was no laughing at the time. So, London again after all this time. Hard to believe it's been ten years. To be honest, I never thought I'd be back. Neither did I. I didn't imagine Japan would ever be invited to an international symposium like this. Though, really, I doubt anyone did, to be honest. It's all thanks to you, isn't it, Siyashiro? What are you talking about, Eugen? <laughs> of course. Judge Jigoku. He must complete the set. He's the other man who 16 years ago... I nailed it! I theorized that. Came to London with Cosmo's father and Professor Mikotoba. He's the third visiting scholar. Well, all those passport checks and luggage searches at the border took rather a lot of time. I must say, I'm very envious of your ministerial status. 
You didn't have to go through any of that, did you? Ah, I knew you were jealous. Ha 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 ha. Sorry? Ministerial status? Yes, didn't you know? Siyashiro here is also Japan's Minister of Foreign Affairs. It was his personal insistence that allowed you to take Kazuma's place here on this study tour. Guilty as charged! Ha 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 ha! Oh, he, he really loves that joke. It's going to be really funny when he says it for the 40th time. Oh, well, thank you very much. He's really every bit as important as he looks. Ah, uh, yes now, Naruto. I received a telegram from Lord Strongheart yesterday. Oh, you did? It appears that some things came to light in a trial you were involved with eight days ago. About what happened ten years ago. That tragedy. Yes, could you tell us any more about it? I mean... Not here, surely, in a public space, talking about a thing that, if, like, could spark international war? Really? Really? You're gonna... Really? Okay. That, that's... Huh. Why does that trunk almost look like it's big enough to smuggle someone in it? those cases just left there on that trolley. Aren't they worried about thieves? I know I am. Haven't you seen the porter over there? Don't worry, he's obviously keeping an eye on everything. Ah, so it's a trap designed to catch any chancers who might be tempted. Oh, hey! You're... Yeah, I recognize that horseshoe mustache. That's, a. Uh... You were a juror, maybe five or six, in the first game, but what what trial did you preside, preside over? Maybe it was the stabbing of Miss Green one. Why did the porter give me such a scathing look just now, do you suppose? Well, some might say you look a little suspicious with your jet black clothes. Not everyone clad in black is some sort of ninja with intent to steal, you know. Man. Ninjas are cool. Have you seen all those sparkling, sparkling jewels up there? They must have gathered every gem in the world for that. Ah, it's called a chandelier, I believe. It's designed to provide elegant lighting in large, spacious rooms like this. They had to gather every gem in the world just to illum illuminate one room? It's probably electric light bulbs that are actually throwing the light. If I tried to hang something like that from the ceiling in the office, it would be scraping on the floor. I think perhaps chandeliers aren't for you, Mr. Naruto. That desk is known as the hotel reception. So this is the reception. Surely the entrance is... Be oh, whatever. Anyone wanting to spend the night has to report there to sign in for their stay. Oh, so do you think that's what the head clerk behind the desk there? Oh, do you think that's the head clerk behind the desk there? Yes, I'm sure it must be. I'd love to stay in a grand hotel like this for a little while, wouldn't you? Just to know what it's like. If the hotel fee was paid through our stipend, I'm afraid it might bankrupt our homeland. True. London gives the word expensive a whole new meaning. Thing. Look at that. It's a picture of the Crystal Tower. Well, the Great Exhibition is one of Britain's most prestigious achievements in recent years. I wonder how tall it is. 
It really does represent the pinnacle of scientific achievement in so many ways. There is a 20 meter tall chimney on the bathhouse near my lodgings at Yume University. The attendant there is always boasting that it's the tallest object in the neighborhood. I'm sure. Did you know that over the channel in Paris, there's a tower that's 300 meters tall? What? Uh, uh, how many times taller than the chimney yet you may use, you may soak in hot springs is that? <laughs> you may soak in here, All right? And if it's that tall, how does it drop properly? The smoke would get stuck, surely. I don't think it's that sort of tower, Mr. Naruhoto. It's the Eiffel Tower. It exists for bragging rights, I think. I wonder if it's actually a monument to something. Eh, I don't care. So, gentlemen, get a load of this. Professor Mikotoba, I wonder, could you... C could I show you something? Why do you seem so nervous? I suppose because I'm a student showing something to a professor. That's always quite nerve-wracking. Well, I'm sorry I perturb you in that way, but anyway, I'm afraid I have nothing useful to say about that, really. <laughs> Fair enough. I think that's just generic dialogue. So, how was the voyage here? Well... Fifty days at sea is a long time by anyone's standards. But it wasn't as bad as when we first came sixteen years ago. No, that's true. Then I truly wondered if we wouldn't be drifting in the vast ocean for the rest of our lives. This time we followed the same route as you, so we were able to relax and enjoy the experience. Ah, so you stopped in France's beautiful capital, Paris. We did, yes, though only for one night. And yesterday evening we left the port of Dunkirk for Dover. Just in time for the symposium, in fact. It starts tomorrow. It's wonderful that you are invited to attend such an important international event. I'm very proud of you, Father. It's thanks to Seisho here. Sixteen years ago he managed to ingratiate himself with Britain's Attorney General. I'm sure that's why he was invited. And I suppose you could say I'm something of an appendage by default. Speak for yourself, Eugen. You were close friends with a professor of forensic science at a major hospital. Yes, well, I'd rather not dredge all that up, really. No, there's been a lot of water under the bridge since then, but it doesn't bring him back. Cosma's father, I suppose. The Professor, the killer who took the lives of five members of the British aristocracy, it was actually Cosma's father, wasn't he? That's correct. Genshin Asogi. <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> Genshin. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't separate that from the title of another game I play like every day. Oh I, oh, I need to think of so many Genshin Impact jokes. Oh no. Genshin. You knew, I presume, Father? Yes, he was a close friend at the time. Genshin came to Britain as a police detective. He was studying investigative techniques at Scotland Yard. I've never understood what drove the man to commit such heinous acts. It was a closed trial, so the public never knew the truth, and he was executed with little ado. To this day, very few people know what really happened, even in our homeland. But what about Kazuma? Did he know? Did he know the truth about his father? No, no, of course not. He was told his father passed from sickness. However, I suspect he may have had his doubts. Oh, why? As you know, I tried to guide Kazuma growing up, 
as if he were my own son. Then one day he came to my office at the university and said, I've decided I want to travel to Great Britain and study there. Do, do you think he wanted to come here to investigate his father's death? I don't know. But when I looked into his eyes, I did know that there was no way I'd be able to stop him. Something else came to light in that trial the other day, actually. Oh? What? Well, having disappeared in Hong Kong and been missing for almost a year, Cosma has since turned up here in London, working as the apprentice of Lord Van Zeek's. What? What? That's news to us. Oh. So, Lord Stronheart's telegram neglected to mention that part then. Oh. I still feel it's ridiculous that this conversation's even happening. Like, a big plot point in this um, duology of games is that Ryunosuke had his license of practicing law here suspended because he pushed for the playing of government secrets in a tape at the end of the last game in a public trial. And now here we have Ryunosuke talking with two adults who should know way better about this. It's like... This problem could be simply fixed by just having this conversation take place in a hotel room and not, you know, the lobby. This is, this is bothering me. As you know, we both thought Cosma had died on the steamship during our voyage to Great Britain in January. But he didn't die. He's alive. As you knew, didn't you, Father? In actual fact, no. What I did know is that when your ship docked in Hong Kong, he mysteriously vanished. We sent a team of investigators to Hong Kong to try to ascertain what had happened, but to no avail. But he's still alive, and here in London, you say? I never dared even to dream it. Why on earth did the young man not make contact? The government and the police have been chasing clues fruitlessly for months now. Well, it seems that he was suffering from amnesia. What? Amnesia? When we first came across him again here in London, he didn't know who either of us were. Hmm, I see. He only regained his memory eight days ago. This is unbelievable. Yes, it's quite miraculous. I wonder why Lord Stronheart didn't let us know. I must speak with him urgently. I wonder how Cosmo's been these past few days. Would it be wrong of us to go and visit him? That began 16 years ago now. It's a distant memory, really. It was Yujin here, Genshin Asogi, and myself. We were the original three. The first judicial scholars from Japan to travel overseas to study. Ocean voyages were not what they are today, I can tell you. Sixteen years ago, things were tough for their generation. Your father was an exceptionally fine medical student at Yume University at the time, you know, young lady. Yes, Grandmother told me. He went to do research at a great London hospital to study autopsy, practically unheard of in Japan. Yes, it was an eerie place sandwiched between the back of a prison and a burial ground. Ah, what a small world we live in. Ugh, not more talk of graves. Very often, there's no one willing to deal with bodies following autopsy work. So you see, autopsy labs have something of an unavoidable relationship with graveyards and prisons. Not my cup of tea at all. 
Do you remember that Scottish prison governor? Caden, his name was. He was a good man. Yes, but then, of course, in our sixth year here, everything changed with that dreadful case. When Genshin was arrested for a series of the most gruesome murders. I simply couldn't believe it. I had known the man for years. I was a witness in the secret hearing, and I tried to speak in his defense, but... But you went a little too far and ended up facing charges yourself, didn't you? Well, suffice to say that after that trial, we were sent back to Japan. There was nothing more we could do to save Genshin. He was a lost cause, sadly. Well, if you'll excuse us now... Yes, I'd like to get this trunk up to my room as soon as possible. Oh, I I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have held you up here for so long. I'll call for the porter then. Just wait here. susaro san has gone off at a run. I'd like to stay and talk more, but I do have various preparations to make for tomorrow. Yes, of course. It must be a big responsibility representing our entire country. I wish you the best of luck. Naruhodo. I hope you'll keep an eye on Susato for me. Keep looking after her as you obviously have been. Oh, no, I, I mean, if anyone's looking after anyone, it's her looking after me. Well, I do appreciate you being there for her. After all, I've been a miserable father to her. I've thoroughly let her down. Sorry? What do you mean? Well, it was 16 years ago that I started my long study tour here in Britain, as you know. The very year Susada was born. Yes, I heard. The birth of my daughter was the most joyous event of my life, but... Well, sadly it was accompanied by the most tragic event of my life, too. Oh, yes. Susato-san hinted at something like that. Yeah, there's a reason Susato was cared after by her grandmother and not her mother. It was a rather turbulent time at home. Anyway, I won't bore you with the details. The point is, I became rather less dependable than befits a grown man. And it was then that CSRO offered me the opportunity to study here in Great Britain. I was too worried about you to leave you behind. So perhaps I was a little heavy-handed when it came to persuading you to accompany me to London. So, that's what happened in a nutshell. And that's also the reason why I now feel compelled to give my daughter as many opportunities as I dare. Though the world does not readily afford young women such things, I must say. I completely understand, Professor. Ah, one other thing, Naruto. If I may be so bold, I have a favor to ask you. Oh, really? Of course. What can I do for you? Well, the thing is, I... I'm so sorry that took so long. Mususato, perfect. Ah, oh, great. Now then, allow us to take your bags. Allow me to take your bags. One moment, if you please, Porter. Uh, of course, sir. That machine around your neck? It's a camera, I believe. Quite right, sir. Just five shillings for a lovely photograph to commemorate a wonderful stay at the hotel, sir. Well, I think given the occasion, we could justify the expense. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. No, wait, wait. No. Don't, don't do this. Don't do this. This is a red flag. A death flag. Don't pull another Stardust Crusaders on me. Don't do it. No. Oh, uh, yes, of course. 
Okay, one of these people is gonna die. Oh no. I'd like to thank you for coming with me, Mr. Narhodo. It's really made Father very happy, I think. Oh, well, I'm pleased then. But we were interrupted before. Professor Mikotobo was about to ask me something. Shall we return to Baker Street then? I expect Iris will have some delicious tea waiting for us. Yes, let's go. I'm getting more and more anxious about Kazuma, though. Perhaps I'll try to meet with Lord Strongheart later and ask after him. Oh. Well, there they went. Uh, Waterloo. Uh, could go straight there, but let's take it from the top. It's good news that Professor Mikotoba arrived safely, isn't it? Yes, it's wonderful. And the fact that Father has been invited to this important international event really makes me very proud to be his daughter. Your father, Judge Jigoku, us, and Kazuma, of course. There's an ever-increasing number of Japanese here in Britain's capital, isn't there? Well, yes, I suppose so. But London does have a population of six million people, so I think we're still a minority. Susato-san's father who came here as a visiting student 16 years ago, and Kazuma. It's almost as if some great power has been at work, drawing them here across the ocean to London. And I feel as though the waters are starting to swell again now. <laughs> Anything new about, uh, the shove-bade? The spade is still here, look. Please, Mr. Naruto, it's not a spade, as I think you well know. It's a shovel. It didn't take long to reignite that old argument. Ah, I have an idea. Let's give the implement a name, like Professor Hairbrain named his tools. Oh my god. Oh, I never thought of doing that. Could it be Charlie? From now on, then, let's call it Ryunosuke. Oh, that's even better. No, 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 no. It's clearly much more of a Susato. The old argument has taken a new and unexpected turn, it seems. <laughs> uh. That Dharma is still winking at me. Look. I wonder when he'll finally get his other eye filled in. Yes, I wonder. Well, you should know, Susato-san. I entrusted the task to you. The truth is, I have already decided when that will be. What? Really? When? That's my little secret. <laughs> Probably when Ryunosuke, Susado, and Kazma are all together again, sharing tea and talking happily over good times. Is this new? Oh, right, the table was bare earlier. Susato's uh, kind of renovated it. My desk is just as it was before I left. Sumi ink and a calligraphy brush, even though we're in England now. That strikes me as typically you, Miss Susato, and typically not you at the same time. Well, I do enjoy all the wonderful new things to come out of the West Ink of the Cultural Revolution, of course. But I'm not ready to give up my brush just yet. And anyway, Susato-san can write more neatly with a brush than most people can with a pen. Practice makes perfect, as they say. Whenever you serve me tea, it always takes me back to Japan. I know you're not particularly fond of the bitter taste, are you? 
So I do always try to pick out less bitter matcha for you. She does often serve up an unusually mellow blend, it's true. But the anticipation of the taste in my mouth makes me bitterly worried anyway. It is very difficult for you, isn't it? Oh, the sea life seems very content in there, I must say. I've noticed something recently, actually. The anemones breed at a most extraordinary rate. Oh, really? It's a mystery why the whole seabed isn't buried in a mountain of them, actually. Oh, how splendid! That really is a mystery, isn't it? I wish there was someone here to explain Susato-san's strange reaction to that. <laughs> you see? I've been keeping my desk beautifully covered. Um... I think you've seen this one. Can't auto-skip. Yeah, we've seen this. I remember it. <sighs> anyway, let's head downstairs and talk to Sholmes and Iris. Could talk about the room, but meh. Wait a second. I almost missed it amidst all this clutter, but there's something new and very familiar on that hope chest there. Right near the fire. That's, um... Hey, wait, actually... What was the symbol on, like, the pommel of Cosma's katana? Wasn't it the three circles? What was his family crest? Was it on his mask the whole time? That's kind of odd, but... No, probably not. W what was that? A, a man screaming in a most unflattering way. Do you think? Could it have been Mr. Sholmes? Oh my, I do hope not. Oui, I... Don't, uh, do it anymore. Oh, yeah. There were a lot of redheads in that intro cutscene to this case, weren't there? Like a whole platoon of them. A squad of redheads everywhere. I guess these must be those people. Mon ami, mon ami. Stop this disgraceful display, huh? Oh no. I don't know how to do French. Nah. No. Oh, this is, um. Armstrong? What's his name? Arm yeah. This is Armstrong all over again. Uh, who are these people? Look at their hair, it's bright red. I think they must be clients of Mr. Sholmes. And Gina? Right, you two. You're coming with me now, down to the clink. No, not in prison. It is dark and damp and I don't like it. Buff, is the darkness? It is my friend. I am not scared. Ooey, ooey. But you are always scared of the dark. <laughs> Shut your mouth, you idiot. I will sit quietly in the dark and plan our next dairy nice. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, I, every, oh, I immediately get their deal. What weirdos. Oh. I feel like somehow these guys are gonna make the Skulkin brothers look competent. Oh no. I don't like this. I don't like it. Well, tough. We'll finish this down the yard. Now get moving. Bye then, Ginny. Have fun. Oh yeah, thanks, Iris. And thanks, you great detective. <laughs> a 
Gina makes a fine detective herself, doesn't she? Oh, Susie and Runo. Hello, Iris. We're home. Well, did you find your daddy? Yes, we arrived at the hotel just before he and his friend. Oh, well, that's great news. I hope I'll get to see my daddy again soon. Tugging on my collar over here. Mm. Oh, hey, what? look at that over there. That's really interesting. Hmm. What were we talking about? Oh, never mind. Let's find something else to talk about. Uh, yes, of course. Dr. John H. Wilson. So, Iris, all that remains now is that greatest of problems known to man. What are you doing? Oh. Oh, my retinas, it burns like fire. But before we concern ourselves with that, I believe some tea is in order, don't you, my dear fellows? Is something wrong, Mr. Narhodo? Do I have a crumb or such like on my face? Uh, not so much on your face as on your head, I'd say. Come along then, everyone. I brewed a lovely special blend. Time for tea. Whatever is going on here today? In that case, let us sit and drink now. For I am, in fact, expecting a guest later today. Right. Man, he even dyed his eyebrows. That's some dedication. What if he dyed his armpit hair? This looks like last week's edition. Someone was circled. What's that article circled in red ink there? Red? Wait a second. Wait a second. There's another word for the shades of red. And it's a word I could associate with a very famous uh, Herlock, no, Sherlock Holmes story. Is this a study in Scarlet? I think this might be a study in Scarlet. Not that that means anything to me. I don't know a single thing about it. <laughs> it's in an advertisement column. It says, To the Red-Headed League. Oh, I guess... Sholmes is doing some infiltrating. The Red-Headed League? What's that? I don't know. I've never heard of it before, but... Is something on my face? Clearly this has something to do with that. Lively hair. Uh -huh. Uh, what if that crying duo is going to be our defendants here? Okay, to the Red-Headed League, on account of the bequest of the late Ezekiel Hopkins of Lebanon, Pennsylvania, USA, there is now another vacancy open which entitles a member of the League to a salary of four pounds a week for purely nominal services. All red-headed men who are sound in body and mind and above the age of 21 years are eligible. Apply in person on the morning of the 31st at the large park on Lime Street. So it's not some exclusive secret society. Sholmes is just in it for getting more money. Oh no, he's so poor. I guess uh, everything he did with the wax museum really... Is not paying the bills. Oh. Okay, well, what else is there to read? Let's see. Uh. Would entrust himself to the flimsy that manufacturers shamefully pass oil of walking sticks these days? Off as walking sticks these days. Not high, that is for certain. However, I will say that the shorter lengths of overcoats recently have been a great boon. 
The convenience and freedom it offers, while preserving warmth and fashion, is highly pleasurable indeed. Am a successful session? Reply to this advertisement, their particulars and potential private interview. Fighter. Let's see. Public health report. Despite the condition of the City of London itself of late, it has been a positive year so far in public health. There have been fewer cases of consumption reported when compared to the time last year, and smallpox is at an all-time low, thanks to the vaccinations offered at the smallpox and fever hospitals throughout the various parts of London. Doctors, however, warn that there appears to be the beginning of yet another uh, cholera epidemic on the horizon. Although the cause of such outbreaks remains unclear, the public is strongly advised to drink only water which has previously been boiled. Ugh. Let's see. Retrospective continued from page one. Truly, more than any other nation, Britain has been successful in its uh, endeavors, thanks in part to the generosity of its many investors and its long, illustrious tradition of fostering inquiries into the sciences. Lest it be forgotten, she is the nation that gives to the world the genius of Sir Isaac Newton. However, there is one other factor at work, the shifting field of economic thought. Despite the fact that Adam Smith's magnum opus, The Wealth of Nations, was published in 1776, the doctrine of laissez fair has only begun to truly take root in the last few decades. It remains to be seen just how influential and enduring his ideals have proved to be. Yes, truly fascinating. St. Bart's Hospital! The latest research findings and leading hypothesis this month from the Teaching Hospital of London. There is an emerging consensus among doctors and scientists of all nations, whereby the theory of miasma is being soundly rejected as experiment, after experiment has yielded conclusive evidence in support of what physician John Snow had concluded many years prior that there is a strong correlation between contaminated water and the prevalence of certain diseases. In fact, the latest news to arrive from the continent is consistent with our own research into the so-called germ theory, by which minuscule microorganisms are the actual causes of a great many illnesses. The medical uh, community has already begun in earnest to identify and categorize the tiny creatures as microscopes also continue to improve through the dedicated work of London's famous instrument makers. We expect that in the coming years, improved instrumentation will allow us to see the germs with further clarity and in greater detail as never before. Yeah, that, that's worth reading. Um. Boy, more health advisory. Yep, boil water. Get vaccinated. Good practice. Anyway. Oh! I guess Kazuma kind of just dropped a mask on the floor in the courtroom and Bruno Scansusato picked it up as a memento. Okay, okay, that's... <sighs> The mask Kazuma wore when he was assigned to Lord Van Zeeks as his apprentice. When he cast it aside after the trial the other day, I just sort of picked it up. We ought to give it back to him, I suppose. But he has his memory back now, doesn't he? And I can't help feeling he might turn around and tell me coldly to wear it myself. But isn't he your best friend? Alas, poor Susato. He's wearing up, up opposing colors to me now. It's just not fated to be. Yeah, don't see anything else. Uh, any insight into the armband? Um, Mr. Sholmes, about this. Tell me, Mr. Naruto, is this the first time you've shown me this particular trinket? Oh, um, I don't really remember, to be honest. If my saying that it's a color for a breed of miniature canine with a particularly long neck were to precipitate a here-we-go-again from your lips, 
we could be sure it was not the first time. I remember that. Deduction, you see, my dear fellow. Deduction! Eh. I realize those are chances could replace a dialogue, but... Meh. It looks as though someone circled an advertisement in this paper, Mr. Sholmes. To the Red-Headed League. Hmm. Does that strike you in some way? I was thinking that just maybe it might be related to your bright red hair. <laughs> so, at last you've learned to apply my methods, Mr. Naruto. Sorry? In the first instance, and quite indispensable, observation. Believe me, I could have seen that hair with my eyes shut. The radiance. So then, allow me to regale you with the details of my latest exploits. Regale or boast? Oh, okay. A new dialogue. See, that's preferable. Anyway, who were those two freaks? Um, Mr. Sholmes? Who were the two gentlemen that were here before? Oh, just a pair of petty criminals, nothing of significance. Of course, they have to make a living somehow. And when the mood takes me, I'm willing to turn a blind eye to all manner of infractions. When the mood takes you? All manner of infractions? But when such fellows set their sights on Mr. Herlock Sholmes, well, that's when their luck runs out. Oh, my! You were the target of a crime, Mr. Sholmes! But I quickly devised a plan to entrap them and deliver them to our young detective ally. You should have asked Gregsy to come, too. He could have had an arresting tea party. I did send word, but no answer was forthcoming. The man is consummately in the wrong place at the wrong time. There is a word for it, I'm sure. Aha! I have it! A bungler! That's the word! It's a good job he's not here to hear you say that. So those redheads had been up to no good. I wonder what that man did. Um, what was that about the greatest of problems known to man that you mentioned before? Is it another fiendishly intricate case, Mr. Sholmes? Hmm. How should I best explain it? Are you aware of the theory of evolution by natural selection, perchance? Oh, here we go. Um, well, I think I've heard talk of it somewhere, possibly. It's a revolutionary scientific theory that was newly proposed 40 years ago now. Newly? According to its author, Mr. Darwin, we humans were once apes who lived in the treetops. Wait, what? We, we were apes? N no, no, silly. We are apes currently. Indeed. And from the very moment those apes descended from the canopy to live as humans, it has been our lot to be at the mercy of the greatest problem known to man. Our lot? What is this great problem, Mr. Sholmes? Why, is it not obvious, my dear madame? The problem of rent. Uh. But did you not receive a rather large sum of money from Madame Two Spells only the other day? Psha! A large sum? One potted herb for Iris and a new motor car for me later, and all of it has quite disappeared, I assure you. You bought a car? Honestly, Hurley, you know you squandered it. Yes, well, anyway, two days ago, I discovered the answer to man's greatest problem, for the coming month at least. And what was the answer? Why, 
There is a sus substantial clue before your very eyes. Don't tell me. Let me see. Humans are sorry creatures, unable to see what is in front of their noses. Let me give you some assistance. Don't look, but observe me very closely. There is one particular feature about my person that has changed. You should notice it in the end, I, th I think. <laughs> in the end? It's been stabbing me in both eyes right from the very beginning of our conversation. Okay, I, I, you know what? After after I finish recording this, I want to go to like this segment here and like use an eyedropper tool and a photo editor and just compare that shade of red to the most vibrant, bright, eye-watering red I can muster, like. Like if a pound F F F F F F is like pure purest white, this is the equivalent for purest red. I swear to God. I think we might need another clue before we uncover the full answer, Mr. Naruto. Thanks for the hint. I'll be tearing my hair out if this charade goes on much longer. Yeah, he really does look like an anime character. Like, he looked like an anime character before, but now he's an anime character. Mr. Sholmes, isn't it about time you told us the truth? Just over a week ago, you said to us... I will now tell you something of the first importance, my dear fellow. Great detectives are wont to lie. It will serve you well to remember that. That case aboard the SS Burya in January. Cosmo wasn't killed, and you knew he wasn't dead at the time. So what was really going on? The fellow was unconscious for a very long time. If he hadn't regained consciousness when he did, his life would have been in mortal peril. Of course, a side effect of the prolonged comatose state was amnesia, as you, as you now know. It was a simple enough task to silence the crew. But how? After they'd carried him out of the cabin, I assembled them in a lobby area. Then I made them swear to leave him unconscious and have him unlaid from the ship in Hong Kong as a murdered corpse. Oh, how horrible. It was you? It was necessary to find some material with which to persuade the crewmen to keep their word, of course. But why? Why do it in the first place? I will be at liberty to elaborate in due course. But for the time being, I would like to reassure you. I didn't foresee subsequent events. What events? His disappearance in Hong Kong. Oh! I believe I may have made a gross error of judgment. Mr. Sholmes. Uh, this better be good. I am this close to being so mad at him. So what is the Red-Headed League, which seems to be the subject of the advertisement you've circled? You noticed it in the paper, then. That, my dear fellow, was going to be the source of this month's rent payment. It was? How? According to the advertisement, the Red-Headed League is a distinguished institution of fellows of unspecified governance. In fact, the only condition for becoming a member is having red hair. That doesn't seem entire that doesn't entirely surprise me. But listen to what the lucky redheads receive once they join. 
an unconditional salary of four pounds a week. Oh my, four pounds a week? But why? What are they paying people for? That I don't know. No details are given in the advertisement. But surely every red-headed person in the country would be flocking to join in that case. You're right, Susie. There's no time to lose. I'll put in my application at once. So will I, just on the off chance. That might be stretching a point, I think. The trouble is, they have a fixed number of members, you see. Oh, I see. So once a certain number of people have joined, no one else can. But as luck would have it, one member recently passed away. Luck? It wasn't particularly lucky for the redhead in question, I feel, Mr. Sholmes. So you decided to try to join in his place? Correct. I mean, look at me. Have you ever seen such a red-headed fellow? Uh, no. So why? Why did it have to go so wrong? What on earth happened? A blunder, Mr. Naruto, though it pains me to admit it. So were those two redheads here to inspect you or something? What did you actually do to your hair, Mr. Sholmes? I'm glad you asked, Mr. Sato. What you see atop my head is neither dyed nor hairpiece. I changed the color of my hair overnight. By the wonders of chemistry. Chemistry? I was conducting some research into a method of rejuvenating spent tea leaves. And in the course of my work, I stumbled upon a potion that, when taken, turns one's hair a flame-like red. So he's working on a way to reuse tea? My god, he is desperate for money. Would you like to try it? It will make every hair on your body perfectly crimson. I think I'll pass. But, Mr. Sholmes, is it quite safe to drink? Surely it's bad for you, isn't it? <laughs> ah, amateurs are always hampered by such fears. Oh, I should never have doubted you, Mr. Sholmes. You mean to say... But of course. To earn four pounds per week, one must be prepared to turn a blind eye to a little danger. That degree of red signals more than just a little danger, surely. So anyway, Hurley left full of confidence yesterday with his new red hair. For the park on Lime Street where the red-headed league Gordon interviewing prospective new members. So what went wrong? The whole park was choked with red-headed folk like a coast, uh, like a coster's orange barrow. A what? I queued for eight hours solid before at last I reached the front. But when the panel of interviewers saw me, they immediately said, Ah, uh, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, are you in disguise to conduct an investigation? So naturally, I had no choice but to reply, Shush! Don't give me away! After which, I could do little else but turn and leave. Then this morning, when I looked in the mirror, irritation stirred within me. So I turned that pair into the police. Oh dear, what a disaster! For Hurley and those two redheads! Mr. Sholmes, you mentioned before that you were expecting a guest today. Indeed, Mr. Sato, that is correct. Not another of those red-headed gentlemen that were here before. Not at all. They were petty villains. The guest I am expecting is a client. Oh? A young gentleman who wishes to appoint the services of this great detective, no less. 
Oh, how wonderful, Mr. Sholmes. You must stay and observe the fashion in which a great detective receives his customers. Must we? I have you in my clutches now, Rent. Just as I have you in my clutches, Redheads. <laughs> that hearty laugh is masking rather sinister thoughts, I feel. You know, the lady isn't due for another hour yet. Don't feel as though you must wait around if you have other things to do. Right, a trip to Maelstrom Hearts. And maybe see Cosma, though... I'm pretty sure that Cosma will have just vanished. I'm gonna guess that Barak and Mail will not have seen him at all. So I suppose, looking back at everything covered in this video, the single largest question I have... is just how much... Um... Oh... How, what's his name? Oh, Mikotoba. How much Mikotoba and Shigoku actually knew about Genshin? It's like... In a way, there's a direct parallel. This is the second time a party of three Japanese have been sent to Japan. Well, in Ryunosuke and Susato's case, it's a bit looser in terms, because Ryunosuke was a stowaway, but... Ten... no, sixteen years ago, three Japanese were sent. One of them probably had a secret mission. Genshin Asogi. And then, sixteen years later, another three Japanese were on their way to Japan, one of which with Definitely a secret mis mission. Kazuma Asogi. Uh, God, it is driving me nuts. And you know, speaking of these similarities between the, the, these two different parties of three... God, Jigoku really did say, Yes, I need to get my luggage up to my room immediately. What? It, I, I mean, I said, boy, that, that suitcase is large enough you could smuggle someone in it. I'm like, no way, did, did he actually do that? But who the frick could it be? I mean, if the game wanted to be really, really funny, it would be, um... Um... Oh, uh... Soski Natsume, yeah, but... No, I don't think that man would ever want to come back to Britain, so... Uh... Oh, well... Oh, good lord, it's 1 a.m. <laughs> I need to go to bed. I need to edit this video real quick and slap it up on YouTube, so... Oh, we've gone on quite long enough. I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been more The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you next time. So until then, please take care.